Hi, I'm Brian Cho. I'm a pianist and rehearsal coach at the COC's Ensemble Studio. Today, I have the beautiful job of walking you through the gorgeous music of The Marriage of Figaro by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. One of the really amazing things about being a part of the Ensemble Studio and being a rehearsal coach is that I cover a variety of roles. It's my job to know the score inside and out, so not just the orchestral writing, but knowing the singer's parts. And by doing so, that allows me to fill in for any absent members or late members and um, being essentially part of the cast. Um, ultimately, that allows me to be the support role for everyone and collaborate with everyone. Today, I'm especially lucky to be joined by two of our ensemble members, Alex Hade, bass baritone, conducting a role study of Figaro, and soprano Midori Marsh, our Susanna. It's hard to describe the music of Major Figaro without talking about the entirety of Nozze di Figaro. Um, Mozart, in my opinion, is an absolute genius. Uh, despite what people think, he's simplistic. But as Brahms remarked, it was beyond him how anyone could have created something so perfect. And I also agree. Um, Nozze is a combination of not just music, but amazing drama that Mozart himself sets. Um, one of my good friends, colleagues, and coaches, Tom Diamond, says that Mozart is the best stage director. Everything you need to know uh, of what to do in terms of drama is written in the music. So by that sense, the music is not only brilliant in terms of the composition, but it sets up the drama perfectly as well. Uh, one thing people might notice in the music as it goes along is that for each character, there's different, I guess, musical signs or clues as to whether they're of noble status or not. And I can think of the uh, beginning of Act 1 and Act 2, respectively. So in the beginning of Act 1, we have, without any recit, without any introduction, it just starts with the duet of Figaro and Susanna, and they're both servants of the Count. And their music is very playful, it's very light, it's almost, it's a joke, almost, and it's just... <laughs> It's super playful and it goes on like that the entire piece, compared to when the Contessa comes in and her being nobility, she has this grandeur to it and it's very... <laughs> it's super beautiful um, and I find that amazing to notice that Mozart sets the drama and the character differences within the music. Of course, um, there is the nature of uh, timing and time signatures related to each character, but just the fact that he can set the character within the first two bars of music is astounding. So throughout the opera, Figaro goes through a massive transformation, not just musically, but in terms of his character and his status. Um, and for today, Alex and I would like to demonstrate the very beginning, when you hear his working man class style music. <laughs> So throughout the opera, Figaro goes through musical transformations and also character transformations. His status as a lowly working class man changes when he reveals that he's actually of noble birth under Marcellina and Bartolo. For context, nobility and characters of noble class always have a company recits, so the Count and the Contes, while working class, like Figaro Susanna, have dry, secco recitativos. And the nice thing about this idea Mozart plays with is that even though Figaro reveals that he is of noble class, he still maintains his stature of a working man. Um, so his recit in Act 4, despite being semi accompagnato, is still dry, dry recit. <laughs> Signor Padrone, ora incomincio a capire il mistero, 
e a veder schietto tutto il vostro progetto. A Londra è vero, voi ministro, io corriero, e la Susanna, segreta ambasciatrice, Non sarà, non sarà, Figaro, il dice. So, contrary to the title of Figaro, his counterpart, Susanna, is, well, on for the most of the opera. She's never gone, right? <laughs> <laughs> no rest. Right? No rest for the wicked. Uh, so, actually, tying to that, um, in the end, so the act four, uh, we reveal that Susanna has disguised herself as the Contessa, and she's tricking Figaro. She knows Figaro's hidden in the bushes somewhere, but Figaro doesn't know that Susanna's, well, talking about him. He thinks that Susanna is talking about the Count. And so this Reset and Aria combo is really important because it shows the dichotomy of nobility and working class through disguise. Susanna is disguised as the Contessa, and you'll hear in the beginning of Giunse al fini momento, that it's the true Susanna, the excitement, the, the nervousness of this moment. And then when she begins to sing, it goes right back to beautiful, grand, long, accompanied recit. And Mozart does a brilliant job of switching back and forth, and we'll demonstrate for you today that recit combo. <laughs> What you just heard is followed by the aria De Vieni Non Tardar, and this is the aria that, well, summarizes the love between Figaro and Susanna. It is deceptively simple, but requires so much finesse. So focus on legato, focusing on the words, the, the momentum of the breath support, while at the same time, simultaneously just being Susanna, in love with Figaro. And so Midori will brilliantly demonstrate the beginning of De Vieni. So that was Nozze di Figaro in a nutshell. And the reason why I guess people love this music so much, going back to what Brahms said, it's perfect. You know, um, you hear the overture in advertisements everywhere. You hear Non Pendrai in advertisement for Cheez-Its. 
Mozart was ahead of his time. He was a writer of the future. And that's why I believe Mozart, Nozze di Figaro, is so popular even today.